All right, welcome to episode three of Commission Breath and our first guest visitor, Emily Misk. Welcome, Emily. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. It's good to have you on here. I feel like, uh, well, we met you January at uh, Scott's little accelerator, incubator, or whatever you want to call it with Brick. <laughs> and I felt like that was one of those like fast friendships that formed, um, aided by a lot of wine. Yes. And just being in one room working on our business for what was it, three days straight? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've become quick friends from there. Yeah, I remember when I, I got off the plane first and I was at the house by myself for like a couple of hours, which I was really happy about. Um, and then you guys walked in and it was like a big hug. And then let's go to the restaurant. <laughs> there was no like, hey, I'm Emily, you're Brandon, this is Tom, this is Sebastian. It was just, like four friends going to dinner right away, yeah. um, which is pretty unique. I think we had a really yeah, great- Yeah, we uh, hit it off right away. I think by the end of it, Scott was like, okay, I've had enough of these guys. They're too, they're, they're too good of friends and rowdy and they've been drinking too much. I'm just done with this. <laughs> he, yeah, was he, he did offer to drive us to the airport. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> to know like to get out. Oh, to get it. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want to leave now? <laughs> <laughs> it was an earlier flight. <laughs> But uh, no, that was a, it was a great time. And I think it was really mm -hmm. cool for our businesses as well, uh, for everyone listening or watching. What we did is a deep dive into all of our processes. And we just shared kind of what we did, things that were a win for us, and then just figured out what we were going to implement from there. And I don't know about you guys, but my business has been better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the it, you know, it's your traditional mastermind. It was just... Um, the difference, I would say, and and I mean, these must exist elsewhere, but um, we basically spent those three days and then including the flight home, the three of us flew home together. Um, it was kind of like client journey day one, lead generating day two, and then content and social, uh, you know, marketing day three. And when the day would end at, let's say, three o'clock, that's when we would just kind of percolate more ideas together and talk more about what's actually happening in our businesses versus the mapping and the and and that sort of thing. So the conversation really didn't stop when it comes from from a business perspective and building and creating and sharing. And I think we were very fortunate because we were in a um, like you said, fast friends kind of situation where the trust was there and there was a lot of collaboration um, that was just shared ideas. And I think we all really fed off each other's energy. And as much as we did have a lot of fun, which I certainly came back literally having my cheeks hurt from smiling, um, it was super productive and a very, very good use of time to be around people that are so driven and client centric to be able to share ideas and really kind of pushed things forward for and to start the year that way was really great especially in a down year yeah, yeah for sure it was a great way to kind of kick off the year i remember on the flight home you were buzzing and i was like oh, i'm yeah. not gonna sit by you but you insisted and i'm like okay, oh. i'm gonna sleep um and you're like every two seconds what about this what about this dear lord i remember I'm that so I'm certain actually I didn't ask to sit beside you. I had reserved my seat prior and someone reserved the seat beside me, but yeah. we all have a different memory, a memory of what really went yeah, on. I, so I, so. I remember, I think she, she got the hint that you were sleepy and you kind of just wanted to do your own thing. Cause we, she kept looking over at me at my L and we we're kind of like spitballing for the rest of the flight too. So um, I just remember that flight thinking like, holy crap, we're all buzzing right now and we're all, already working at our next like implementation going forward and that to me like we that's a good sign that we had a good group um at that yeah. accelerator so that's right the energy yeah. was great yeah with that being said is there anything from that that you've implemented into your business so far that's been super effective yeah um so we talked a lot about you know, we have a, a, a CRM that we run. So a lot of it had to do for me with uh, the amount of emails that go out, um, uh, simplifying and automating the processes, but also using video a lot more. I am actually super active on social media, that sort of thing. Um, but I wasn't really using video within my business that much. So um, what I mean by that is like to clients directly in email. So that's one thing that I've started doing just to answer questions. 
Um, and then just really being super consistent with the processes. I've always been really process driven, but sometimes I'll deviate. If I get distracted by something or I'll go this way or go that way, the file always ends up closing, but maybe things happen out of order. Now I'm so systematized because I have it all documented um, where really if something unfortunate were to happen to me, someone else could step into my business and continue on the process, um, which is, you know, great. Yeah, for sure. And that's also great for if you and Josh want to take off with the kids or whatever, you can have someone step in and mm -hmm. run your business for you without worrying that things are going to fly off the rails. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was actually a good week for you for um, brokerage sales as yeah. well. <laughs> that's I right. You got Sebastian and myself signed up. So I think I was signed up before. I can't remember if it was you from were, that yeah. trip. Was it before? Yeah. You were, yeah. Mm -hmm. she, got, she got the rest of the group. She converted everyone other than Scott, which I think actually probably converted. I, yeah, he's he's definitely converted. I think um, when I uh, see something that I really appreciate, and I think the same thing has happened with your system as well, I have absolutely no problem talking about it. Um, if I believe in something and I use something and I, I can appreciate the effectiveness of it, I usually want to share it with people. It's the same thing with, you know, if I really liked a lip gloss or I enjoyed a restaurant, you know, I always will share that with people without hesitation. Um, and that's just how I feel about, obviously, for brokerage, for me, for my business. Um, and it was built for me. So it's really hard for me not to uh, think of it as a solution for everyone. And that it's easy. It's just easy for me. It's not even a sale. It's just an easy conversation about something that I leverage every single day mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure. Sure. Awesome. and i do really like your lip gloss recommendation oh, as well those thanks are, those, are, those, are, those are my beard sparkle <laughs> and you always look so good it's, it's really i attribute all the this the looks and glances i get from the moms that drop off for that peachy lip gloss i wear mm. <laughs> i don't even know what you guys are talking about right now i'm lost yeah. Yeah, we're on, a, we're on a tangent, Tom. Mm. I'll get so you. we touched on it briefly there on commission. And so obviously you are in the commission breath realm. And mm -hmm. you and I were chatting before Tom joined us about like, um, do you know what I mean by that? And you were like, yes, 100% I do. Yeah. So I have to ask you, has there been a time in your career that you've had commission breath? And if so, did you recognize it or like, what was the point at the time that you wrote? So I usually recognize it in other people. And I'll be really honest. Um, I don't think I've ever really had it. And it's going to come from a, a place of privilege. And um, uh, it's, it is what it is. I can't hide my, my truth. When I started this business, I got into it because, um, well, I was already working in the bank for 10 years. I um, had children and I was a, like stay at home mom, essentially, I'd quit the job at the bank and I was just kind of um, relaxing at not relaxing at home, I shouldn't say that um, I was managing my family. And um, I got into this from an administrative perspective where I just wanted to keep kind of busy. I was doing it because I enjoyed talking to people and helping people. And I got connected with Ryan Wiley and I really liked working with him and another broker, um, Megan Hastings, who I ended up being with for five years. And it was really more of a keep your mind sharp and I wanna be in the industry. Um, I actually didn't have any desire of being a mortgage broker. I was going to open a dog walking business once my kids were out of the house and I could stay active and be outside and be with puppies. Um, so I really didn't have that ambition of, um, funds or money or wealth. That was never something, and it still really isn't to me, um, something that leads me from a, uh, passion perspective. Now, that being said, would I do it for free? Probably not, right? Like if I'm being fully honest, but I never had that. Um, if I didn't close this deal, then such and such would happen because my husband worked and I was just doing this out of a um, general interest. And I, my passion, I would say, really comes from efficiencies and process improvements. So for me, doing process improvements and that sort of thing was more interesting. And I didn't even really want to talk to clients. I didn't have that confidence in the beginning until I went through a training course later on in my, uh, like about a year and a half of being in the mortgage industry on the broker side, I should say. Um, so I didn't have that same, if you don't close 
I always see people in our groups and our, our mortgage groups, that sort of thing, where they're like, if I don't do this, I'm scared. Or if this happens and that happened, I, th I think that's a really unfortunate position to be in where you have this pressure of something else. It doesn't have to be financial necessarily. It could be fear of losing a realtor partner, could be fear of, you know, whatever the case may be where you have to close on something. I never have felt that personally. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, that's a very, like you said, it's a fortunate position to be in. Yeah. I, I like what you brought on there though, that it's not always commission breath. Isn't always from commission. It can also be from losing that partner or losing mm -hmm. that status within the group or whatever it might be. So there's right. those external pressures there. And I guess some people maybe show it more too, as well, because they are, if you're like a single mother or a single parent and you know, you're relying on this, um, it can be a little bit more scary that way. Yeah. But I do think that ultimately that kind of energy and stuff is a negative for your business to grow. Well, point. the intention changes from we're doing this to help someone um, versus we were doing this because we want to buy that next thing or have that next thing. And two things I will say, one is that although I'm in a position right now that I have the support of my partner, I also come from a situation where like I did everything on my own. I moved out of my house when I was 16. I paid for my own education. I always had to do kind of everything on my own. So I have had absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So on the flip side, I always say that I have this ability in me where I can go back to having nothing. And I, I think I'd be fine because I could sell my house tomorrow. I could do this. I, they're all just things. So I don't have attachments to things the same way as well. I would have no, I mean, I, I don't want to say I have no problem selling my house tomorrow and like just moving to wherever, but I, I wouldn't, I don't think of things the same way as like, I work so hard for this. I'm holding it all together. If something really hit hard, then I would adapt and change. And I think that comes from having so much change growing up and just how things were. And the second thing was, is I had a very influential mentor, mentor um, named Shuba, who always said um, to us, like, don't spend your commission before you have it and be a business, not a mortgage agent. And what that means to me is, you know, if, and I, I kind of always felt this way because I come from the banking side. So I always had kind of that financial literacy. But I think a lot of us come into this industry all of a sudden start making so much money. And then you're spending money on a idea of you're always going to have that. But, mm -hmm. you know, we have zero months where they come and go. And if you budget for having zero months, three months in a row, which could very well be your reality, then you know, you'll be in a better position than if you're always living at like, I'm going to make, let's just say, I'm going to say a $10,000 a month. And you're always living at that cap. Um, you know, when your income taxes are due or when your car payments or whatever the lifestyle choices are that you had, you're not running as a business. You know, you don't have that business mindset. You have a in and out mindset, which it's, it's not effective. So I've always kind of run my life that way. But then when I took this one kind of course there, you really kind of understand that it happens a lot because we do get big checks every once in a while. And I think that people spend it or they have in their mind, even what they're going to spend it on before it's happened. Yeah. And that's a great mm -hmm. point. I think a lot of people from what you're saying, like a lot of people this year are facing those struggles because we're in a down year. So it could be a good reality check for a lot of brokers. And you are probably seeing a lot of them exit the business this year. I know for yes. me, even on the realtor perspective, like I'm, I'm getting a lot of bounced emails lately from my realtor list. And I'm like, okay, well, you know what? These people are probably exiting the business. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they overspent on whatever they were doing with their lifestyle. So that is definitely seems like an upper hand that you have. Um, and a lot of people should kind of uh, lead by you're leading by example there. And, and they should. Yeah. You have to be aware and willing to go lean. And, you know, I used to have a team. I don't have a team this year. This year, it's just mm -hmm. me. So you have to be okay with cutting expenses. Yeah. And you can even end up making the same amount year after year. But if your expenses are like this one year, and then they're like this one year, then guess what year you do better, right? So you can you can shift things by spending less or saving, um, or you can make more. Um, but if you're in a year where it's harder to make more because of the market, then what you have to do is trim the fat. 
Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that, right? So um, that's something that, again, those are, I would say, tools that I use to ensure that I don't have uh, commission breath um, because clients feel it, realtors would feel it. Nobody likes coming from a place of desperation. Um, you know, I like to think that I have that Tom Brady vibe of a chip on my shoulder for a lot of reasons that, um, you know, keeps me competitive, but I'm very well known for turning clients away for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, and I don't mean that in a inappropriate way. I mean, if they're right for the bank, they're the right for the bank. If they're not right for a virtual process, then they shouldn't be working with me. Um, I am 100% virtual and I am someone that is digitized. And if you're someone who really likes to have that face to face and sit down in an office, I'm not the right person for you. And if you can get a lower rate from your bank, then I'm not the right person for you. Um, so understanding kind of who your ideal avatar is and really catering to that as well doesn't make me change who I am in my business for someone else, which also makes it easier to not have that commission breath where I'm like, I need to sell that. I need to push that. It's like, if we both jive and have a good relationship, then we're going to go on to the finish line together. But if we don't, then I'm going to help you get to the right area of expertise with someone who can. Yeah. And you're going to have a much more enjoyable business working mm -hmm. like that with people that you enjoy working with too, and not grinding oh, gears and forcing something that just shouldn't be happening. Um, and you mentioned down months. So we always try to bring out some lead generation strategies that people are using in the industry. So mm -hmm. for you to avoid and mitigate those down months, what's something that you've been doing in your business? Maybe it's been something that you've been doing for years or something that you've implemented lately that's allowing you to pull in leads to keep those consistent months. Yeah. So first of all, I've had very slow months at the beginning of the year. I, everyone's feeling it. Um, however, the difference I would say that uh, I have maybe over some other people in the industry or even just in general is I don't stop. So when things do get slow, I almost double down more. Um, that's always been my nature of things. I, it's, it's really important, I think, to assess yourself and are and and look at yourself with true, honest lens. Are you making yourself busy, or are you doing money generating activities? And writing down those money generating activities, I'm a big. Even though we own a CRM company, I will always have a pen and paper in hand. I always like to physically write things down, and I have a short list. Even though I have a, a task list that's digitized, I like to just physically see it in my face. Um, and so some of the things that I specifically did in the beginning of the year was, first of all, I did sit down with my accountant and go through all of my expenses and eliminate anything that was not necessary. That was something I did both in my personal and my business. And I also have no problem talking about money. That might be something as well that um, people that might have commission breath have. And I'm very honest. So uh, I think it's really important to be transparent. You don't have to tell everybody about like how hard it is or, or like how much money you're cutting or whatever, but being honest with yourself and the people that are involved in your business. So that's the first thing I did was I really analyzed where things were going and what things were doing that were not necessarily serving me. And waiting a full year to do that isn't effective. I would say quarterly is really important, if not monthly. And I tell my clients the same thing. Like if you're looking to save for a down payment, let's go through your um, bank statements. And I go through it with them. And we digitally do it on the screen saying, you know, did did we need to spend this or have that or whatever? And it's not one of those things where it's like cancel a Netflix subscription and now you own a home. It's a lifestyle change. So that's the first thing editing. The second thing would be, I would say that I invested in that mastermind with Scott and you gentlemen. Um, that was a big thing from an energy perspective. We took photos with the goldfish mindset is everything. I fully believe that starting off the year, seriously, though, like I know it's all funny and everything, but like starting off the year with a solid mindset going into a very challenging time, which we already knew it was going to be helped with a relationship before the you know four of us to have a real strong support there it also helped for generating ideas and i started thinking about everyone's going to have challenges so what are ways that i can help and my belief system is to give before i take um you don't have to take people will give back to you if you continue to give so the one thing that we all did was the landing pages for lead generating to help continuously build our list while we sleep essentially. So that was a big one. Um, I've gotten quite a few leads from that. 
Uh, the other thing that I've focused on a lot more was um, people in this environment, clients and realtors are, and I even just heard it in the grocery store yesterday, talking about rates and how hard it is and everything. But if you actually look at breakdowns of pricing, it's not that different. And over the last 25 years, the average rate is around 4.89. So we have to look at the bigger picture and how do we, you know, make that digestible to clients. So I'm going back to basics, which is down payment charts, taking specific listings off realtor.ca and showing how you can afford this house, really making it visual so people can understand and then creating that content for my uh, realtors. I've all, I also run a, as you know, social media business within brokerage where we create content for our realtor partners. Um, so just adding that value and really doubling down on that. And then the last thing I'll say is that uh, limiting the in-person events now. So I was really stretching myself thin for about two years where I was, I was everywhere. Like I did big conferences, speaking events, um, oh gosh, I like community events, like everything, sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. Um, now I'm very much, it's not because of the market, it's more time related. My kids are getting older, they're not napping as much. So I wanna be around them um, and, uh, and I have less time. So I do things more like this, like the podcast. Uh, we are doing our own podcast as well. Um, I do the online like Instagram lives. I try to be as present as possible there, um, supporting other people's businesses by creating content for them. So again, down payments for open houses. I have this on Wednesdays, oftentimes are when things go live for realtors. So I have about six or seven uh, open houses that I'm preparing content for that. I just email it to them now and they print it. I don't go to the open houses anymore. I uh, used to but um, more online stuff and supporting through education and, and that sort of thing. Those are kind of my main pillars right now for growing the business. Nice. That's awesome. I, I love the going back to the basics and also just that, that piece you touched on in the beginning is just the momentum. I feel like a lot of the problems that if I've had them in my business before, or I see them in other people's, it's that you get really busy, 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 busy. And then you're like, oh, fuck, okay, catch my breath, stop for a sec. And then that like week you caught your breath ends up being the loss of revenue three months down the road. Yes. And by staying consistent, you just, even if you're feeling like, hey, I would just want to do nothing today, you just do that little bit. It compounds so that you never have that, that total reduction down to zero. Even if it's 50%, it's still something. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the so the landing page that you mentioned, are are you just putting that in like a mm -hmm. Facebook banner, and it's a call to action for someone to opt in, and then essentially you're building out a drip campaign. Like maybe you can break that down a little bit as to what you're doing there. Yeah, for sure. So um, we have two, and so the first one would be. Um, I think it's five mistakes not to make in your mortgage process, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, we do have a drip campaign for that. So that one's directed specifically to clients. And it's, um, you know, basically five tips to help you process the, the or get specifically as a buyer. And um, we kind of have that drip campaign where by, basically they sign up, they get the information, and then we follow up with them um, it is automated, but at the end, then I do set like I um, typically that one we're getting actually quite a bit of applications from. Um, it's not just a banner. I do do paid advertising behind it. And then I also will share it every often uh, within my own social channels. So I don't just leave it there. I find the um, experience in general with like I'm a, I'm a coach when it comes to social media and stuff like that. There's uh, for mortgage brokers. And it's so often that people post and just expect engagement. I think we really have to continuously advertise these things. So that's the first one is the mistakes that clients make in buying a home. The second one I have is a, a second look on your existing mortgage. And that's where someone can fill in a form. If they have an existing mortgage that's up for renewal, we recommend between eight to six months prior to your maturity to start having that conversation. 
And basically without physically having to pick up the phone, they can enter in very little information about themselves and upload a mortgage statement. And within 24 hours, I will give them a high level understanding of where I think they could be. And it's really up to them. If they want to use that with me and they appreciate the service, then they'll work with me. If not, they'll take it to their bank and say, this is what I think is available in the market. And if their bank doesn't match it, they'll come back to me. That one's a pretty passive one. But where I win on that is people often say nobody has ever offered me a second opinion before. It's very low um, time for me because it's just statically sitting there. And I just, again, push that one out through social media. Um, but I get a lot of inquiries and that helps build the list. And then when they purchase later, that's where I'm finding the benefit there. I don't always win on renewal, but I almost always do on purchase. And, you know, we have our VIP club, which we nurture the client that way. I have my own drip campaigns that I nurture the, the client that way. So eventually they do come through. But I think the important thing, again, with like if we're going back to the commission breath is understanding as well, a very big picture of the client journey. Typically, when I get an email address, I don't close that client for almost up to two years. Right. Like if they're a first time buyer, they're coming in and inquiring, or inquiring, they may have, you know, two pre-approvals and then buying at that point, it's eight months. You know what I mean? Like it takes a long time. So we are in the relationship business, in my opinion, um, mm -hmm. we are in the advice and service business, which means that sometimes we have to really prove ourselves and continue to add value before we get a sale. Um, so, and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, the third one is more of a recruiting, um, capture for where I can, like, we can say we're all part of bricks mortgage, I think. Um, and so I have five tools that every mortgage broker needs in their business in 2023. And one of those tools is broker edge, which is our CRM company that we run. Um, and then, uh, and then bricks mortgage, which you might not think is a tool, but if you're not supported in the right way, buy your mortgage brokerage, then you are not going to be successful. So, and those again are drip campaigns and those three are running in the background right now. We could be getting leads as we speak and I'm not actively doing it, but it did take me the time to set it up. Love yeah, it. for sure. And I, I like that point there on focusing on the lifetime value of a client. That's actually one of my painter's tapes in the background is just always focus on the lifetime value because you can't, you're not always going to win a renewal. Sometimes people are going to shop you at their bank, but if you take the time and you treat them properly, they are going to say, hey, my son and daughter are now looking for a purchase. I love how you did my renewal budget. Uh, do you mind chatting with them? And you get yeah. opportunities that way as well. Um, to touch on the, the BRICS point, because that was actually something I wanted to ask you about, because when we met in Kelowna, you had actually just joined BRICS. So mm -hmm. kind of for you as an experienced broker, what was kind of the catalyst that led to you wanting to switch? Uh, what attracted you to the model? Because like, obviously, um, like I grew up within Bricks. I was there when it was called something else. Uh, yeah. And Tom was like the first pro to join on. Mm -hmm. I the first pro to join on. Um, so that kind of what, what drew you and, and you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah. So first of all, um, I've been, I've been a coach of Scott's. He had a company where he coaches mortgage agents and I was one of the coaches that he had hired and I had worked with him in collaboration for about two years, I would say, um, where I would help support mortgage agents. And he had always said that he would never open a brokerage, um, which is funny, right? I guess Hugh and Justin Bieber never say never. Um, but uh, yeah, so he um, he did. And I actually just went to the broker talks, which is like, you know, an education platform that he uses um, to promote bricks uh, to go and shake his hand and say hi, because he's in Kelowna. I'm in Toronto. Um, we'd never met, but I had been working for him for about two years. So I actually didn't go to switch brokerages. Um, but what drew me to the uh, idea of switching was I was looking to open a brokerage. I had just gotten my broker's license. I was in conversations with quite a few people about what that would look like. And um, straight up, it would take you as a broker owner, you get taken away from doing the things that what I consider what I love, which is actually working the deals and having the relationships with clients. Uh, you become more administrative because you are working more with the lender relationships and 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 even people management, which I was, you know, I'm I would like, but I love 
doing what I do, which is mortgages. Um, so it gave me an opportunity to continue to do what I wanted to do, but still be that independent um, broker. I, and there's a lot of incentives from a monetary perspective, but that wasn't really what pushed me to it. It was really the idea of um, the support is amazing. That is unreal. The idea of being part of a startup is very exciting. And I truly believe that no one is doing what we are doing in our industry. And I think we are getting a lot of attention, some of it not so great because we are disruptors. Um, but the transparency that Scott promotes when it comes to pay transparency, relationship transparency, how things go, um, nothing is held back. You can read it all about it on our blog. And so many agents in this industry really have no idea how much money their broker owners and brokerages are holding back. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. Um, and as somebody who was a, you know, a top producer, um, you, you do learn like lender kickbacks and stuff like that. And you're thinking like, oh, uh, that's different. And so it may not be that, and, and maybe we shouldn't be entitled to it because there are things that broker owners do for our agents. So not to say that, um, that, you know, I deserve this and I deserve that. Um, but I think the openness uh, is really important. So the openness of Scott's idea and the idea of it being a startup was extremely attractive to me. And then the energy in that room was really fun. So um, I left even at that after that meeting thinking like, I'm not going to join up. Um, but then it was about a week later <laughs> that I did. Um, so yeah, and I've been here uh, basically since December. Yeah. or January. So it hasn't been so long because today we're in June. So six months and it has been absolutely exceptional. It's, it's transformed how I do business and, and I'm absolutely loving it. That's awesome. I actually, mm -hmm. on that transparency piece, I remember when I first got my first volume bonus from a lender and I, I messaged Scott and I was oh, like, yeah. Hey man, I just want to, uh, I want to let you know that you paid me twice. And I was like, I got, my commission and then i got this extra commission so that's like don't want it to come up later and he's like no that's a volume bonus and i was like i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> like, we give which you is every... awful right like yeah. yeah and he's like we give you every dollar that comes from the lender for your files and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing and now like obviously I don't oh yeah and and so you recognize those but it's funny, man, because like there's all these different payouts that I'm learning. I'm still learning. And to your point, I'm like, it's not just uh, more so like we deserve every penny. Like there are brokerages that offer a lot that I I understand like, hey, you probably deserve to have like get that 80 20 split because you're doing all this for your agents, which mm -hmm. cool. just be transparent as to where that money is flowing. And that's what I love about bricks. And I think we even touched on it last week. I'm like, um, Brandon, you probably too. Like I saw this, there's a couple of basis points pay from like previous closed mortgages. I'm like, where is this coming from? And I still don't understand what, I know it's some sort of efficiency bonus, but I'm like, okay, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's the funniest thing. Like if I were a lender, I would be like, I don't, I don't need to pay this. Uh, half the people don't even know about it. Uh, yeah. I think most people don't know about it. And, um, and that's, that's, but again, it's not about the money, it's about the honesty. And for me, the honesty really matters. Um, it resonates with me on a, a very high scale. Um, I'm, I'm very transparent, I'm very honest with things and sometimes to my detriment, um, where I will push people away because I know it's not the right fit and I tell them to go or that sort of thing. So, um, and that's okay. Like I've talked myself out of perfectly great sales because I thought it would be better if they went the other way. Now, if they still come back, of course, I will service them. Um, but I, I think it's important to say, like, if I know that I can offer the same rate as RBC and you're already with RBC, it's easier for you to just renew with them. Now, on the flip side, I have had people say, I don't care. I'm so angry with, you know, whatever lender, I'm not saying that they were negative, whatever lender it is, I want to go with you. I don't care if it costs me more paperwork, not money, but paperwork, I will do it. The time is worth it for the expertise, mm -hmm. then I will help them. But that's kind of the vibe of like, if you just tell us where the money's going, then um, we're okay with it. But if you just if we find out through someone else's podcast that there's, you know, 20 grand that we were entitled to that, or that you got that we didn't like, there was no conversation. So I think that's the, the issue. 
Um, and that was the solution. And the other thing um, that I would say about bricks that's really great that I personally resonate with and not everyone would feel this way is we are for fully virtual. So I talk to a lot of agents and they want a brick and mortar. They want somewhere to go into an office. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I had an office space for a really long time. So I actually got a lot of contacts from Mississauga and area where people would say, can we come in? Can we do this? And it's like, no. Um, so bricks is fully virtual. And we are not the right fit for someone, for example, if you want to go into an office every day and talk to a broker owner and be sitting side by each with a top performer, we are all working from our offices or home offices, whatever the case may be. And I personally love that. I don't need a big Christmas party. Um, I don't need fireworks. I don't need all of these things because I have my own friends um, and that I really like spending time with. And I don't have that much time to spend with them. So at Christmas, when I have to go to like three or four Christmas parties, which is like lenders, da, 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 and technically I'm paying for that because, you know, galas and this and that, whether it's my own expenses where I have to buy a gown and this and that, or I'm paying for it in the sense of my split is going to something. And now I feel like I'm obligated to go to it because it's a work event and yada, yada, yada. Bricks doesn't have that. You know, we have a couple of block parties, you know, four times a year where you can join. And if you want to come or you don't want to come for the social side, but it is absolutely not required. Um, and it's not encouraged. Almost. Oh, it's, I shouldn't say it's not encouraged, but it's not like, you know, these are the four or 10 activities um, and we are not paying for it. So mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. I'm kind of introverted in that respect. I like to have my core groups that I'll hang out with. And I feel like within Bricks we've kind of formed that where you have your like group of brokers agents that will go mm. have a beer or whatever and it's not like okay i have to hang out with jim from yeah we the developed our own mastermind and we hang out all the time so yeah um, totally. just because we're completely virtual doesn't mean you can't make friends and and hang out with a good group so i mm -hmm. love that. i agree and you yeah. can always leave guys like tom off the group chat i would never do that <laughs> did you guys take me off <laughs> No, I would never do that. He asked and I said no. Throw <laughs> me under the bus. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Me or not? Brandon? Both of you. Yeah. Go I'm going to, can I ask a question? Am I allowed? Of course. Yes. You know, I'm not like good at following the rules when it comes to you like, ask well, ask we should have, you, we should start the recording now. Um, we should have stated at the beginning of the episode that there are no rules here, M. So yes, you can ask us questions and you can ask okay. whatever you want. Doesn't mean we're going to answer it, but I'm not answering. Okay. Legit. Legit. Okay. So um, I have a question about how, because you're obviously, we're talking about leads and that sort of thing. And you both have a very wonderful solution for people. And I took advantage of it, which I should have said in my, uh, my answer as well, because that was a big part of my first quarter was lead vine. So how are people finding it? And how are you finding it? Cause I know you both use it as well, um, to keep your business going. And I know you haven't had the down year that everyone else has had. So maybe share a little bit about that with me. Yeah. Go take that one, Tommy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So to your first question, for our clients and us personally, it's just the really the system for anyone that's wondering what we do. The main core offer we have is we book meetings for our clients. So we have a dialer that dials out, books referral partner meetings, whether it's a realtor, FA, past clients. We do that for you on autopilot. So that way, the whole idea behind it is that when you start getting busy, you're you might be underwriting, you might be putting out fires. Like there's so many different things you have to do in your business where you're going to have that roller coaster of production. So having that dialer doing outbound phone, phone calls for you on a daily basis helps you with that consist consistency of leads, even in a down market like this year. So that's been key for all of our clients. We book them regular booked meetings on a daily basis. And Brandon and I, we still implement that in our business as well. And it, it's really just about keeping those leads in consistently. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think like, obviously, like anything, there's growing pains to doing it. Like it's, there's tech mm -hmm. and there's people involved. So we've kind of been working through that. But in a sense, it's also made our process in our own business so much better because we're recognizing, hey, there's 
this inefficiency within Leadvine? How do we fix that? And then how do we imply, apply that to our business? And mm -hmm. it's helping us grow that way as well. And the kind of the piece, the gem part about Leadvine I realized this week is like, I see so many people looking for like accountability partners and um, that kind of thing. And there is that within the Leadvine community and the, the Facebook page, but also more so like, if you have someone who knows your schedule and is booking you a meeting, you can't screw off and go yeah. play 18 holes because there's nothing in your calendar. Like it's going to be like, Hey, sorry, Tom, you have two appointments this afternoon with realtor partners. You know, if you don't show up, you're going to look like an asshole. Yeah. And so that kind of like forced accountability has been really great for people as well. Yeah. I think that's what drew me to the system is like, I, was trying to maximize efficiencies and and not everyone is good at cold calling. And I will say that the list I gave you was not cold. It was like my existing database. So that did help. Um, but you're right, just filling the calendar and having one to two meetings every single day in a slow market. Um, one of my partners in particular said to me, and that was in March. So keep in mind that's three months into the year that no one is calling him. He's yeah. like, you're the first person that called me. And I was like, oh my God, that's so weird. Um, because he's a top producer, that sort of thing. Now we already do work together and that sort of thing, but we had a great 20 minute conversation and, you know, maybe it kept him me top of mind because the next day I got a lead from him. So it's, mm -hmm. it's having that consistency. So yeah, you're not playing 18 holes because once you do one day off, then two days off, three days off, then it becomes a habit and you get demotivated. Um, it's like going to the gym, right? Like it's the habit itself. It's not what you're doing. That's challenging. Showing up is often the hardest thing. So it, it, for me, it made me required to show up in a time where mindset was challenged in the market and like things are, things have taken a turn. So, uh, for the better. Um, so I think it's really great. And I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I, I think I told you from day one, it's like super cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Um, I, I think it ties back to your piece on the momentum mm -hmm. and lead vine gives you the momentum for the days that you're sick, tired, kids home, hung over. No. <laughs> and and it, it just runs in the background. And for you, you had your own list there. So it ran really well. And even when we generate the list, sure, you're going to get a few more colder meetings. But it, at the end of the day, it's a numbers it's game. It's your foot in the door. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a numbers game. You get in the door. You you All you got to do is have a pitch, show up follow up and that's mm -hmm. that's all and business will come and it's just yeah. a numbers game the yeah. simple system of just doing it over and over and over yeah. again and it's yeah. funny you mentioned that because people aren't calling realtors like realtors will say oh i get called all the time but they don't like it that's just mm -hmm. an objection that that people handle uh, that they'll get but yeah people aren't dialing especially in this market too there's a lot of people phasing out like i mentioned um and now is the time to to really get calling Mm -hmm. Tom, most people don't call their past clients in our industry. Forget realtors, Very forget yeah. anyone. Um, we have a system where we touch our clients eight times a year, which might seem like a lot, but you know, Christmas and birthdays are one of those. So that takes yeah. away two and mortgage anniversaries are one. So that's three. So we have five other warm touch points. Um, and then we have two calls a year. So technically we're touching our clients 10 times a year to make sure they're taken care of. Wow. Um, it's really important that people understand that we are not a bank and you will not just hear from me at renewal. I am here to help serve you and ask you proactively if you need anything further. And that doesn't mean a, I'm asking you for a referral. I'm asking you, are you happy with your payment? Did your property tax get taken out? Do you have any questions for me since, you know, six to eight weeks have passed because moving is stressful and maybe you didn't think about it at the time. Is your online banking set up? Can I help you with prepayments? Like those types of things where I'm just serving yeah. so that they know that they can come back to. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning of my career, I had people exit out and say, oh, I didn't know that you helped with renewal. And they went to their bank. Oh, now they know because we tell them what we do and we offer to help them throughout the entire life of their mortgage versus just at inception and then, you know, closing. Yeah, that's wow. awesome. That's yeah, and it's super simple stuff at the end of the day. You just got to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, to that point, though, those eight touches you guys send from Gmail, right? Like directly from someone's email account. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
Because the open yeah. rate's going to be so much higher than something like MailChimp. Oh, yeah. No, you know what? I've looked at all those services. I, they are great. They are super great. Um, but these are actual targeted emails to that specific client that are triggered based on their specific needs. So we do a full needs-based analysis. And then on those two calls a year that we have, we update anything that needs to be updated. So could be that you had a child. It could be that you moved again or somebody passed away. It could be a lot of different things. Like, but keeping that relationship and understanding it's a relationship is what we do best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So key takeaways from M for me are number one, focus on momentum. Number two, the lifetime value of those relationships and just make sure you're giving them the energy and the love they need. Mm -hmm. And do we have a number three, Tom? I'm going to go with three and four. No, three and four. So three, M has a superpower and doesn't have commission breath. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no mints for you. Yeah. No and mints. Four, no mints for you. And four is, I would probably say, you really have a knack to dial it back into its most simplest form in this business and go back to basics. Yeah. I think one thing to remember in life in general is that we are just people. So it doesn't matter. I've had really, really, really good years and I've had not so great years and I've had average years, but we're just people, right? So like I'm a mom first, I'm a wife, I'm a friend. And if we are humble and we are supportive and we are kind, then usually things just come back around. There's not that much bad energy out there. There's more good. And I think I genuinely believe that people are good in general um, on the average for the most part. So what you put out, I think, comes back. And uh, if you can consistently just keep putting things out, then you will consistently get back. For sure. Boom. Mic drop. Love it. Mic drop in the words of Taylor Swift. Karma. <laughs> <laughs> Karma's a cat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Man. It was a yeah, pleasure having you on here. And I'm so excited for you both. You know, I would love if we could just always be on calls like we were in Kelowna together. So this has been great for me and super entertaining. And I always love seeing your successes and the projects you take on because I think you're both absolutely incredible people and super smart business owners. So thanks for allowing me to be your first guest. I'm very honored. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, Sam. Cheers.